Bizarre that the New York Times wouldn't have an issue with that. Well, the New York Times does that all the time. But it, but, but bizarre they that they again. wouldn't have an issue with the government tapping into your phone. They work for the government. Are you kidding? Right. The New York Times? Yeah, the New York Times is a conduit for the lies of government. That's what it is. It's their tool. And they're perfectly aware of that. I mean, I used to write for the New York Times as a freelancer. I mean, I've been around the New York Times a lot. And there are, uh, yeah, there are a lot of really smart people there, for sure. Even now, I would less so now. But there's still, I think, smart people there. There are. I know some. And they know. But they think that that, you know, it's worth it because they're bringing information. Or I don't know what they think, actually. Mm. But no, they're, they're tools of power. And that's like the one thing that you're not allowed to be, even if you think the power is good. Like maybe they all support the agenda of the U.S. government, destabilizing the world and impoverishing their own population. Maybe they're on board with that. Even if they are, they shouldn't do it because the job of the media, the press, is to keep power in check. You are kind of like the seatbelt, right? You know, right. You, you make sure that things don't go too far. So, um, and they're not doing that. They're acting as a willing handmaiden. When do you think that switched? Well, I think it's been the case for a long time. I mean, if you look at what happened to Richard Nixon, which I, of course, did not understand at all. Um, Richard Nixon was taken out by the FBI and CIA. And... Um, with the help of Bob, Bob Woodward, who was a Washington Post reporter who had been a naval intelligence officer working in the White House, working in the Nixon White House. And then he shows up like a year later and he's this brand new reporter. He'd never been a journalist at all. He's a naval intel officer, the famous Bob Woodward we all revere. And he's at the Washington Post, and somehow he gets the biggest story in the history of the Washington Post. He's the lead guy in that story. Well, I, I worked at a newspaper. I've been in the news business my whole life. That is not how it works. You don't take a kid like his first day from a totally unrelated business and put him on the biggest story. But he was. He was that guy. And who is his main source for Watergate? Oh, the number two guy at the FBI. Oh, so you have the naval intelligence officer working with the FBI official to destroy the president. Okay, so that's a deep state coup. What else, how would you describe that? If that happened in Guatemala, what would you say? And yet the way it was framed and the way that I accepted for decades was, oh, this intrepid reporter fought power. No, no, no. This intrepid reporter, Bob Woodward, was a tool of power, secret power, which is the most threatening kind, to bounce the single most popular president in American history, Richard Nixon, from office before the end of his term and replace him with who? Oh, Gerald Ford, who sat on the Warren Commission. Now, how did Gerald Ford get to be Richard Nixon's vice president? Well, because Carl Albert, the Democrat Speaker of the House, told him you must choose him. We will only confirm him when they sent the actual elected vice president away for tax evasion, Spiro Agnew of Maryland. So you have a complete setup, like an absolute, Gerald Ford, the only unelected president in American history, actually sat on the Warren Commission. Uh, something else that I accepted at face value until I looked at it, and I was like, that's completely insane. You didn't want to interview Jack Ruby in your investigation of the, the assassination? Okay, you're fake. Yeah, he was on the Warren Commission. And so, uh, sorry for the long story, but the point no, is, no. like that, that happened in front of all of us, but the way it was framed cloaked the obvious reality of it. The people who broke into the Watergate office building from which the name is taken, Watergate, was, I think it was six of them or seven of them. All but one was a CIA employee. That That's real. It's like, look it up on Google. So the whole thing, Richard Nixon was elected by more votes than any president in American history in the 1972 election. He was the most popular by votes, which is the only way we can really measure popularity, the most popular president in his reelection campaign. And two years later, he's gone, undone by a naval intel officer, the number two guy at the FBI and a bunch of CIA employees. You tell me what that is. Th those are the facts. Those are not disputed facts. That's not crackpot shit. That's just look it up.